Well, good morning, Pastor Folger. Thank you for joining us today, uh, taking the time out of your schedule to uh, introduce the church family to, to Faith Promise. How are you? I'm doing really well, and I'm excited to uh, come and be at uh, the church there in, in a couple of weeks. Uh, well, actually, about a little over a week now, uh, and uh, we'll we'll be there to uh, have the opportunity to be in the Faith Promise Conference. We're excited about it. Amen. We're very excited to see what the Lord is going to use uh, you to share with us uh, as our keynote speaker for that conference. And so I just have a few questions. Uh, this We're going to be playing, playing this in the service this evening as well as Sunday to the congregation. And so just a few quick questions uh, just to kind of help us better understand because you've been a part of Faith Promise uh, for quite a few years now. And so the first question is uh, really simply, what is Faith Promise and its scriptural principle? Well, you know, sometimes we think that faith promise is just uh, a New Testament concept, uh, you know, specifically second, uh, second Corinthians chapter eight and nine, where the apostle Paul was right, raising a separate offering, a special offering for the, uh, for the folks that were in, in Jerusalem. But honestly, uh, as we walk through the, the pages of scripture, we do see faith promise uh, all the way through. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking specifically of Jacob. Uh, where Jacob said, Lord, if you bless me, uh, I'll surely give you a tenth. That's in some, some respects a, a faith promise offering. Lord, I'm going to give as you prosper me. Mm -hmm. And uh, then um, I'm thinking that uh, in one of the great stories of faith promise giving is Elijah and the widow in First Kings chapter 17. And I love that story because it really speaks to, um, you know, faith promise giving. Here's a widow woman who had so very little but the man of God showed up and he's got, a, he's got a mission to accomplish. And God said that he commanded this widow woman to sustain the prophet. So that's a pretty amazing statement. And she had nothing. And he said, hey, make me a little cake first. And, and, when, and here's the promise that if you do, God said, you'll eat every day until God sends rain upon the land. And she went and did and God blessed. So that's a, a faith promise picture. So we find it all the way through the pages of scripture. The Bible says, given it shall be given unto you, you know, good measure, you're pressed down, shaken together, shall men give in your bosoms. That's, those are faith promise uh, mission uh, situations that, you know, God makes these promises in accordance to our giving. So I'm excited to uh, share with the church family, First Baptist there, uh, when we get there, some of these concepts and how it all works and how God puts it together. But it's exciting. It's exciting to see God do some great things through mission giving. Absolutely. And, and, and that leads us to our next question is really, uh, how have you seen personally faith promise positively affect uh, the mission giving uh, of the Cleveland Baptist Church throughout the years, both as it started and then even up to this day? Well, I have a unique perspective because uh, I was just a really a young teenager when this concept of faith promise giving was introduced to Cleveland Baptist Church. I think it was back in 1971 or 72. So I was just a junior high age kid. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, back in those days, we, like a lot of churches, were just taking money out of the general fund to support missions. But as this concept of faith promise giving was introduced to our church, the ability to take on more missionaries and have a greater world impact, not only in Jerusalem and Judea, but Samaria and the uttermost parts of the world, uh, you know, we just watched as exponentially the faith of our people grew as they gave. And, um, I remember as a junior high age kid, you know, being involved because it took a little bit of lunch money and gave to missions every month or every week. And uh, then, of course, as every conference would come around, I would increase that. So by the time I was in high school, of course, I was getting ready to go to college and continue to give uh, to Faith Promise Giving and never thought about not giving all the way through college. And then we got married. We, we had hardly two nickels rubbed together, but God encouraged us to just keep giving and, uh, but the church, it just continued to grow. So by the time I became the pastor back in 1995, uh, I think the annual budget was like 300 some thousand dollars to missions. And of course, you know, we went through some tough years, uh, 2000 in the Northeast Ohio was a tough year, man. Uh, the, the economy started falling apart. All the, we were an industrial rust belt city and all the industry started being shipped uh, south and jobs were leaving and the demographics, if you look at the demographics for Northeast Ohio, they just fell apart, but our people continued to give. And of course we got to 2006 and we started into a capital stewardship campaign and, uh, and God enabled us to pay off all the church debt. By the time 2008 came in the bubble crash, uh, our people still continue to give. So by the time I finished as the pastor uh, in June of 2019, our church had given, was giving annually at that point over half a million dollars, closing in on $600,000 above its regular giving uh, to ties. 
uh, into the church. And so it, it's, it's pretty amazing. And our, and our people just absolutely love the missions conference. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I would say, you know, from, from being a small part of that to see it go from, you know, 300,000 to over 600,000. And, and I believe, you know, I was there the last year when it hit over 600,000 and we were over 200 missionaries worldwide that we were supporting yeah. as a result yeah. of it. So it's just, it's really humbling to, to, to be able to be a part of yes, that. Sir. Mm-hmm. And lastly, uh, if you could just explain, you know, because I, I try to explain this to, to folks about how um, really I mean, we used to have two mission, uh, two revivals scheduled a year at the Cleveland Baptist Church. And you really you switch that because, you know, in essence, the, the missions conference acted as a revival. And so if you could just kind of explain uh, the, the revival aspect of it, that would be a great help to us. Well, you know, missions is the heartbeat of God. And when a church gets tuned in to what God is tuned into, you know, he just shows up. And so you know, when you put an emphasis on what God emphasizes, you bring in missionaries who are called of God to take the gospel to various people groups, crossing cultures and borders, uh, you know, and uh, reaching out to share the gospel and plant churches. God blesses that. And uh, so we saw our missions conference become like a revival meeting. Our people look forward to it. They participated in it. They, they gave to it. They got excited about it. And it really brought a, a sense of revival to the church. And, you know, when you get to the end of that week, though, it's very, very busy, a Faith Promise Missions Conference, and you're very, very tired. You're so spiritually refreshed. It's like, can we go on for another week? And, you know, can we keep this going, you know? So I, I think, uh, you know, a missions conference done right, honestly, does bring a sense of the breath of heaven, uh, you know, hot bread from heaven's oven, as the saying goes, being delivered and people getting excited about it and you know when you feast on manna from heaven there's nothing like that absolutely well we're so excited about it um you know pastor mix and myself were talking and when we were talking about adding this concept i can't wait to share what i've been a part of you know in cleveland all these years with you know the brothers and sisters here in kingstown um and and so i I couldn't have we couldn't have thought of anybody better than you to be the one to be a part of coming and kind of sharing with us uh throughout this time and so we thank you very much we appreciate the time and i could i could say i'll see you in about a week or so (laughs) yes sir it's coming very quick god bless you all have a great day All right, God bless.